Over the past 90 odd years or so, down on Chicago's south side, locals have perfected a way to smoke meats that goes against most of the barbecue norms, as we know it today at least. Now, Chicago might not be on your list of cities when you think of American barbecue. However, the city has a legacy of meat eating and it's been a meat eater's paradise since the days of the stockyards, when the city supplied like most of the country with all of its meat. Chicago style barbecue starts with a very specific cut of meat, a very particular sauce, and maybe most importantly, a style of meat cookery and smoking that is sadly a dying art. We're here to change that. And if you love ribs, but have never had rib tips, then you're in for it. Before we get to cooking, in order to bring you the most authentic recipe and technique possible, we're gonna take a field trip down to the South Side's premier barbecue location to learn more from a primary source. Lem's has stood the test of time and is a key player in passing along the Chicago South Side barbecue tradition. Without them and a few other spots around town, this city would be a lot less interesting. Here's the thing, Chicago doesn't really have a unified barbecue style. On the north side, it's kind of mostly about Texas smoked brisket and other regional styles of barbecue that the city's adopted. But on the south side, there's something unique going on. In the early 1900s, the great migration of rural southern African Americans brought them up to larger northern cities like Chicago. With them, naturally came food traditions. Barbecue and smoking meat being one of them. But the difference is, up here in Chicago, it gets cold. Thus, the aquarium smoker was born, which was created to appease health inspectors, allow people to cook indoors during harsh winters, and it's sort of doubled as a display case for all your barbecue. The aquarium smokers are notoriously tough to operate, pretty expensive, and less and less are made every year. But we're gonna do our best to emulate their flavor because it is a unique one and it's sort of what defines Chicago style barbecue. As a white dude from the north side, I'm not gonna front, I really didn't know much about south side barbecue. But after the pilgrimage to Lem's and some consultation with a couple barbecue experts, I think I got a pretty good idea on how to honor the OGs. Before we get started, just to ensure that this recipe runs smoothly, let's summon Chicago local and barbecue professional extraordinaire, Joe Ian. What's up, dude? How you doing? Joe spent some time in some of America's most famous and coveted barbecue locations. And he knows a thing or two about this smoked meats, so we're happy to have him here. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. It will be, it will be. Should we slice some pork, some piggy? Let's do it. All right. Let's get into talking about a nice spare rib. Sure. Not to be confused with baby backs. No, definitely not. I think people associate with spare ribs that they're a little bit fattier. It's like basically if you scraped off the pork belly off of the rib itself, like that's the portion of the pig that it's coming from. So yeah. that's why it's got all that extra It's fat. belly adjacent. Right, mm -hmm. yeah. But you can kind of see like right mm -hmm. off the bat, there's, almost, there's a line of fat defining what you might call the tips, right? right? Yeah, I think most people, once they see that, they recognize rib tips, but they don't understand like a full spare rib is just a St. Louis and yeah. a rib tip. Yeah, they see St. Louis and they're like, oh, I'm gonna buy that because those are spare ribs. It's like, that's part of the spare rib. Right. Should we get to trimming? Yeah, let's do it. I like going from the bottom because the one thing that you'll see right up here is the breastbone. So this is not the cartilage and this is something that we don't wanna stab our knife into because we're gonna end up chipping it. Right. So uh, I like to go like right underneath from here and just kind of draw like a line with your finger of like where we want and just make sure we get our knife right underneath it, crunch through that cartilage. And then as you get to this part where there's not as much cartilage, we just go. So this breastbone though, that's right under my finger here. Do you usually we remove that before we cook the tips or what? Uh, I mean, that's what we normally do for just regular spare ribs, yeah. but for rib tips, I don't think we necessarily would do. Yeah. yeah, rib tips are easy, man. Yeah, man, this is a big rib tip right here too. Look at that thing, dude. Look at all, all that marbling in there too. too. That's it's, wild. It's, it's, it's a lot. It's gonna be nice that's gonna be nice and juicy mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. Cool, tip done. Now we're just gonna take the shiner off right there. Take it out. Yep. Shiner, new term I learned. <laughs> Once you got the tips off the spare rib, go ahead and trim off most of that excess fat. You don't gotta be too strict and crazy here, but trim it off and save it. In a lot of uh, barbecue restaurants, when we're turning ribs down like this, I mean, that's what they're using for sausage, so. Oh, nice, yeah. that's a good call. And we're not gonna really trim too much other than like the insane amounts of fat that would cause flare-ups, mm -hmm. right? Right. So these are our main tips, but you can't forget like the other trim, traditionally throwaway, that are gonna make for just really good rib tips too. Yeah. Like, you know, you could take those shiners and make two new tips right there. I think it's just like, even if you don't want to necessarily use that as rib tips, I mean, you can use it for so many other things. My mom uses it a lot. She'll use like pork scraps for like kimchi chicken and stuff like that. Oh, nice. And so sometimes we'll just kind of smoke them and cook them halfway through and then throw it in there. Ooh, smoke jjigae? Yeah. It's a video. It's a good one. 
We're gonna cook this on a Weber. We need to make sure that this, you know, whatever grill you're using, that it fits on it. So mm. we're just gonna cut these in half to make it more manageable so it's easier for us to cook. Yeah. Right down the middle. Yeah. Beautiful. Perfect. All right, so we're gonna season up. My dry rub does not have any salt in it. Perfect. How do you feel about that? Um, that's usually what I do too. Yeah. If you add in the salt in there, sometimes what tends to happen is all that powdery stuff will start to stick mm -hmm. to everything that's wet. And then if you don't let it sit long enough, all that salt afterwards is gonna start bouncing off. Season your meat first, then add additional flavors and spices if mm -hmm. you want to. Dude, with my turning abilities and your salting abilities, we could, we could do a lot. And change the world. <laughs> One tip at a time. Every barbecue joint has their own unique rub. So feel free to use your favorite or whatever you have around the house. This is my Chicago style barbecue rub that I think resembles Lem's. If you want this exact recipe, it's gonna be available on Patreon for all my supporters over there. But again, feel free to use your favorite rub. Seasoned and rubbed rib tips. I understand most of us aren't gonna scoot over to PetSmart to cop a 200 gallon fish tank for this or let alone commission your own aquarium smoker for your home kitchen. So we're gonna do this using our trusty Weber Kettle Charcoal Grill, which is actually uniquely designed to make really good rib tips, and Weber's actually a Chicago-based company, so double whammy, I guess. Spark them coals, then set the grill up for indirect cooking by putting all the charcoals on one side. Plop your tips on the other side, then toss on a chunk of hickory or other wood, then place the lid on with the vent situated over the meat so the smoke pulls nicely. We're gonna let that ride for about an hour while we work on our sauce. All right, so every good rib tip needs sauce. Very important, especially with rib tips. Yeah, especially with this style of rib tip, you gotta have a sauce. Characteristics of Chicago barbecue sauce. It needs to, number one, be thin. As they say over at Lem's, it's a sauce, not a gravy. Two, it should be acidic. It's a little tangier than your average barbecue sauce. I like it kind of spicy on the spicier side, but not yeah. like crazy spicy. Yeah, I think that's what they said at Lem's too. I think mm. it's a, their version of a sauce is kind of characteristic of a Carolina gotcha. style sauce. Okay, so, cool. Yeah. But one thing that we're doing that is specifically unique to this sauce is we are adding charred onions. And that's because this isn't a 14 hour cook. These tips are on the grill for, you know, two, three hours tops most likely. Right. And uh, just this is just an other way to sort of impart that smoky, charry, grilled flavor into the final product. Mm -hmm. This sauce could not be easier to make. We're essentially going to add all of our ingredients to a saucepan, then bring it up to a simmer, let it cook for about five minutes, then puree the whole thing. Now, this is not to be confused with what we call mild sauce here in Chicago. Mild sauce is sort of a mixture between hot sauce, ketchup, and barbecue sauce. Some people like it with their barbecue, but that's a different thing in a totally different video. Let me know in the comments if you want me to make a video about that. And just like barbecue rubs, every joint has their own proprietary secret special sauce that kind of makes it their own. So if you make a sauce that's acidic on the thinner side and has a bit of a kick, then it's gonna get the job done. Season up with salt, pepper, and of course this wouldn't be an Omnivorous Adam video if we didn't add in the God Particle, AKA MSG. After five minutes simmering on low heat, add the mixture to a blender and puree until smooth. Give the blender time to do its thing. We don't want a chunky sauce. We need it nice and silky smooth. Remember, we're going for a thinner sauce here, so don't be afraid to take precautions. What do you think? Yeah, a little bit a little of water, water in there. Yeah. Just a little bit. At this point, this sauce is extremely flavorful. Don't worry too hard about diluting its flavor. You're gonna have to add a lot of water to right, do that. Right. This is about a cup of water. I'm gonna start with like half a cup and see where we're at. If your sauce drips off the spoon and does not gloop, you're in the right place. All right, let's check on the tips. Woohoo! That's nice. The big one, let's go. At this point, your tips should have some nice char to them. Remember, this isn't a 14 hour cook. We're not doing brisket here. Nice. A little chunk of hickory. So one of the biggest things when talking about Chicago style barbecue is the way that the meat is cooked and smoked, right? Mm -hmm. They use these massive smokers called aquarium smokers. They're these massive hunks of steel and glass, right? That you can kind of see through and they get really, really, really hot, right? Yeah, I guess a lot of people call it now like direct cook smokers because it's a fire that's pretty much on the ground. Basically a grill. grill. Right, yeah. <laughs> it's literally this. Yeah. What they'll do is they'll periodically spray down the coals in the wood, which basically cools the wood down so they control the temperature manually that way. And that sort of creates all this smoke and steam, which also kind of flavors the meat. Right. You know, that, I mean, that's what we're trying to replicate right now is yeah. we threw in a couple of hickory trunks that are a lot drier. We don't want to burn our rib tips or exactly. catch them on fire. So that's why we got our Hit it. little so, spritz bottle right here. 
This is funny because this is kind of like a no-no. It's a lot weird, of yeah. Normally you're used to spritzing the meat, not the fire. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so you spritz the fire, creates all the smoke and the steam, and that charry off the coal flavor hits the meat and gives it a really distinct flavor. It doesn't have that like that really clean, like yeah. sweet smoke flavor. It yeah. has that little bit darker, almost like you're taking a fire out in that darker cloud of smoke that yeah. you get from it. This would be breaking a lot of rules, mm -hmm. like in a lot of barbecue circles, but we don't care. <laughs> I would say like as we just kind of go through, just kind of take a peek at the bottoms of these. The surface is starting to bubble a little bit, yeah. so maybe we'll give these a flip. These should probably be done in the next, within the hour, I'm yeah. for sure. The quick cook time on these stems from the necessity for these barbecue joints to basically continuously feed their hungry neighborhoods. In bigger cities, things move fast, people need to eat, and this way pitmasters can toss basically every different kind of meat that they have to offer on the grill at the same time. It's not to say that care and attention doesn't go into this style of barbecue. Matter of fact, it's actually a lot harder to manage a bunch of different sorts of meats that all require different temperatures and cook times at once. All right, time to chop. Yo, that's a tip. Dang. That's juicy. Oh, that's a good one. Before serving up, it's important to think about tray architecture here. Layer of fries, essentially sauce pinatas, right? <laughs> like they're pretty much just gonna get soft and soggy, but they're good. Next, pile that meat sky high right on top of those fries. You honestly shouldn't even be able to see the fries. I want that sauce to fall into those fries and kind of sog them up. I think sauce is real important on rib tips. It's, it works, all right? Trust me, I'm not like that with brisket or any other barbecue items besides maybe like wings. Rib tips though, sauce them up. That's that. Oh wait, okay. we forgot. In honor of Lem's, to pay homage to the OGs, one piece of really soft, good old processed American white, white bread. bread. Gotta have it. Right on top. Almost like it's a ginormous sandwich. Almost, I mean, you expect this to be on the bottom, but the fries absorb the sauce, and this is almost just like a bread napkin. <laughs> That's what I mean when I mean bread napkin. All right, man, I think it is time. Finally, it's been a while. <laughs> pick, your, pick your poison, or your delicious gonna, meat junk. I'm gonna That's take it. this one right here. All right, ooh, nice charry yeah, boy. That's a good one. This style is all about taking a traditionally throwaway cut and turning it into something glorious. And much like the city itself, Chicago style barbecue is scrappy, no frills, and has its own unique identity and place in the American barbecue conversation. I hope you dig it. Hi, right, bro. Cheers. Cheers. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's really good. Mm. I haven't smiled this hard from something I've made in a while. I know. They're special. Yeah, they are. Dang. To some people, it might seem weird. The techniques might seem questionable. Yeah. But if this is the end result, I'm all I'm all in. I'm here for it. I mean, it's a mix of getting that that smoke and also that char. Right. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest thing about mm -hmm. this specific technique. Mm. <laughs> I was a fat boy. Oh my god. <laughs> loading. Loading. I forgot what I was gonna say. Man. I'm gonna shake your hand. Shake your hand. Thanks, Thanks for having me, dude. Bro, of course. Awesome. Thanks for coming. There needs to be more of this, though. I agree. I want to see this on menus all across the country, 100%. Huh, let me just, why am I using that napkin when I got this bad boy here? <laughs> yeah. All right, that is all she wrote. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like the video, it really helps us out. If you're new here, of course, subscribe. If you're not new here, what's good? Welcome back. Yo, Joe is the man. He does a lot of fun stuff on YouTube. You gotta check his channel out. Check him out on Instagram. I'll leave all his links below. And if you liked this barbecue deep dive, let us know in the comments below what kind of barbecue do you like? Which do you prefer? What's your favorite style? If you'd like to support the channel, the best and easiest way to do so is over on the Patreon. Got a lot of fun stuff going on over there, including exclusive recipes. And that's pretty much all I got. So until next time, take care now. <laughs>